Hello, I hope you are well today. My name is Keith. I am the lead and teaching pastor at Grassroots Church. Happy February. Uh, we are jumping into this new year as we have been with a bang as we continue to think about hope and mission. We've been doing a deep dive into Jesus' teachings and more specifically into the book of Acts. And this is the intro video for the groups this week. Many of you are already familiar with the ways that we have been doing church and accustomed to this time of sharing of your heart and the filling up of our souls by good insights from our Christian brothers and sisters. Most weeks we are in fellowship like this. Um, the last week of the month, the final week, we are in large group uh, worship services. So if you're new to Grassroots or if you're just tuning in here, oh, welcome to you. Uh, I hope that wherever you are today, this finds you prepared and eager to encounter the living God through his scriptures and through the fellowship of believers. So before we jump in today, I wanted to say a word of invitation into Black History Month. Some of you are already into your study of some aspect of African history. Uh, I am. But uh, in case you are struggling or if you're just beginning, I wanted to give you a little advice today. It's not rocket science. Uh, just take an aspect of the beautiful history of African peoples, especially in this land. Musicians, writers, preachers, sports giants, poets, politicians. Do yourself the favor of getting better acquainted with the trials and the triumphs of African peoples here. If you are a person of African descent, I wanted to say today that you are a treasure. The world needs your wisdom. Our Christian family is incomplete without you. And we are going to take a little bit of time this month to celebrate your history and the, the history of African people in order to take your lead into this unknown century. So we are moving ahead now further into the book of Acts for this month. I'll be preaching a little more on the book of Acts as the many weeks go by. Uh, and at the ends of the month. But today, you'll be jumping into the story of Pentecost and the birth of the church. So in our reading today, the Spirit enters into the fellowship of believers, and Peter gives the first sermon. He takes for his text Joel chapter 2, Psalm 16, and Psalm 110. The time foretold by the prophets, says Peter, the day of the Lord is here. It's upon them. As David promised he would not let his Holy One see decay, God did not forsake Jesus in the grave. And Jesus has claimed that he was more than David's son, that Jesus himself was David's king, is now vindicated in his resurrection, ascension, and the pouring out of the Spirit. So I'm excited for you guys to get to jump into this part of scripture today. I'll share a few thoughts here to get you going. First, if you're going to get into this chapter, if you're going to get into the, the beauty of it, you're going to have to have read deep into the Old Testament, understanding its promises and how significant this moment was for the Jewish worshipers. At the time of Jesus, all expectations were on God to do something soon. All over Jewish culture and literature from this time, you're going to find them talking about the day of the Lord, when he would finally return to Israel, that he would reveal himself to all nations, and the one true God would show himself up as powerful, as God above all the gods worshipped in the world. This day of the Lord was on the minds of the people, just like perhaps a first episode in the next season of the hottest show around, the Old Testament ends on a gut-wrenching cliffhanger. Malachi, 
Here's what he says. I will send my messenger, says the Lord, who will prepare the way before me. Then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come. You think Luke Skywalker can get people excited. You think Marvel Phase 4 was hard to wait for. Try living it and waiting for the director to make the sequel hundreds of years later. So much is built on the hope of the day of the Lord. And Peter, with all the signs and wonders of Jesus, is saying Jesus kicked off the beginning of the season, of the new season, the final season. And now, says Peter, we are living in the start of the great resolution. Now, 2,000 years on is not really a strange amount of time for the resolution of the great arc of God's storyline. And the more you study that history, the more that the contemporary act that we're living in makes sense. So second, if it's good to know a little history, but second, it's also good here to know a little geography. When Peter stands up alongside of the other 11 to give his sermon, he preaches, Luke says, to people from the, all the corners of the known world. And if you've studied Acts and the history of the apostles, where they're going to go from here, you're going to find that this is some really cool foreshadowing. Jewish people living in Jerusalem had moved there from all over the world, all corners of the earth, and Matthew and Jude and Simon the Zealot would eventually make their way east to the old people of Mesopotamia. Philip and John and Paul would cover Asia and Greece and Rome. James and perhaps Mark would head down to Egypt and over across North Africa. Thomas and Bartholomew, they would head past Arabia east into India. The Spirit gave them power then, that first day, to speak all those languages. And their futures, the apostles' futures, although they didn't really know it quite yet, would be fanned out into the extents of the land of these residents of Jerusalem. But for this moment, this pure beginning, all the families of the world had gathered in Jerusalem at the nexus of the Holy Spirit in order to hear the first sermon, although they didn't know that's why they were there. Third and finally, I want to, so you know history, you know some geography. Third and finally, I just want to share a few things which stood out to me. This chapter is about God wanting to fill us. Or put another way, it's about the experience as humans of, being, of feeling full-hearted. You have the claim that the apostles, speaking in many tongues, are filled with wine. You have Peter filled with courage. You have the desire of God to pour out his spirit on all flesh. And you have the crowd being filled with awe. We have all experienced, I think, at one time or another, the feeling as humans of being empty, drained, exhausted, despondent. We have all known what it is to be a little hungry or obsessed on getting some nutrients in. When God's presence comes to us, God doesn't just want to embrace us. He doesn't just want us to become his students. He wants to fill us. He wants to come and meet us in our empty places and begin the immediate and long-term process of filling us up. I love how Peter says this in his letter, 1 Peter. Now, if Acts chapter 2 is Jesus, or is Peter's first words, then 1 Peter is Peter's last words, or some of his old last words as an old man. He says so much here. I'll just read it out to you in full about being filled with the Spirit about being freed from the patterns of sins that have shackled us down from the time of our ancestors. Therefore, says Peter, with minds that are fully alert and sober, 
set your hope on the grace to be brought to you when Jesus is revealed at his coming. As obedient children, do not conform to the evil desires you had when you lived in ignorance. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, Be holy because I am holy. Since you call on a father who judges each person's work impartially, live out your time as foreigners here in reverent fear. For you know that it was not with perishable things such as silver or gold that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down you to you from your ancestors, but you were filled with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. He was chosen before the creation of the world, but was revealed in these last days for your sake. Through him, you believe in God, who raised him from the dead and glorified him. And so your faith and your hope are in God. So happy reading today, friends. May the Spirit spark your fellowship today in your minds, in your hearts, in all over you, and in every way. Amen.